Luke chapter 24 On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You have faithful through every storm, you be faithful forevermore, you have done great Yes, and amen. God, you do great things. Yes, you will. God, you do great things. Oh, welcome you on Easter Sunday morning. For me, this is one of the best days of the whole year. It's a day that we say that Jesus is risen from the dead. We live this life every day of the year, but today's a day to celebrate the fact that Good Friday came and Jesus died for us. But today, something incredible happened, and that was Jesus Christ risen. And today we're going to celebrate that. God, thank you for Good Friday. God, thank you that you loved me 
and each and every one of us so much that you died on a cross for us. You died to take away our sin. You died to take all of the punishment that we deserve. And you died so that we can then have a new communion, a new life with you. And God, thank you that you didn't stay dead, but you rose again. Thank you that death couldn't hold you. Thank you that nothing could hold you. And Lord, thank you that you rose again, risen, victorious, and conquering. God, thank you for Easter. Thank you for all that Easter means to each and every one of us. I pray that today you're going to help us to be able to connect with you in a real way that helps us understand again what Easter is and what Easter means. Amen. Amen. Right at the start of our Easter service today, the kids have decorated some eggs. And kids, if you've decorated eggs, or adults, if you've decorated eggs, what I want you to do in a minute is I want you to head to the back, go and grab your eggs, and I want you to come and put them at the foot of the cross. And I know this might sound really simple and really strange, because what has an egg got to do with the cross? Very little. An egg is just a symbol of new life. It's a symbol of possibility. What have flowers got to do with the cross? Exactly the same. What's chocolate got to do with the cross? I don't know. It doesn't matter. What matters is today is that we focus on the cross. And actually, we chose to write the word risen on there because we're not celebrating something that is dead. We're celebrating something that is empty. We're celebrating a risen Christ. And that's just, it absolutely blows my mind. So the band are going to play some music. The kids are going to come and put their eggs that they've been decorating in Sunday school and this morning at the foot of the cross as a symbol that says, the hope of my future relies on this. Done is the battle against the Dragon Black. Our champion Christ has confounded his force. The gates of hell are broken with a crack. The triumphant sign of the cross is raised. The devils shriek with hideous voice because the souls are reclaimed and go to bliss. Christ takes our papers documenting our bondage and writes paid in full on the back with his own blood. sake endured being slain and like a lamb in sacrifice was prepared is risen up again like a lion and like a giant stretches himself on the height the dawn is breaking radiant and bright aloft is gone the glorious sun the blissful day comes forth from night because the Lord is risen from the grave.
the great victor has risen again on high, who in our quarrel was wounded to the death. The sun that grew all pale now shines bright, and darkness clears up. Our faith is now re-established. The signal bell of mercy resounds from heaven. The Christians are delivered from their woe, because the Lord is risen from the grave. The foe is chased, the battle is ceased, the prison broken, the jailers fled and banished, the war is gone, the peace is confirmed, the fetters unlocked and the dungeon emptied, the ransom paid, the prisoners delivered, the field is won, the woe is overcome, despoiled of the treasure that he guarded, because the Lord is risen from the grave. Cross. 
what, what, is, what is the special day today? Does anyone know? Has anyone, has anyone worked it out yet? Yeah. What is it? Shout it down the microphone. Easter! Yeah! It's Easter. Buddy, did you know it's Easter? You did? Have you had lots of chocolate? Are you going to a party later? Now, you were telling me earlier, you were telling me, Buddy was telling me earlier that, that he'd lost something. Have you found them yet? No. Ah, oh, he's lost something. Kids, I'm going to need some help because what Buddy has lost is not a squeak, but what Buddy has lost is he's got some invitations to his bear party that him and some of his bear friends are going to. So I'm going to need a couple of volunteers to help me find some more. So I'm going to, going to choose you because you had your hand up first and you also had your hand up. And I'll love you and I'll love you. Okay, so I think somewhere in church there are some buddy uh, cards like this. He hasn't written them yet, but he needs them to be able to write them. So uh, some of them, I think, are probably up on the gallery as well. So when you find them, bring them back. But don't run. Health and safety is very important. <laughs> okay. However, there will be a prize for the pair that brings me back the most invitation cards. We like a bit of competition, don't we? Yeah. I do, anyway. Um, so, are you ready? So, it's you two versus you two. Okay. Are you going to win? Yeah! Are you going to win? Yeah! Well, if it's pure enthusiasm, I think they'd both be winners. Are you ready? So, if you've got a buddy card looks like this, hold it up in the air. Okay, then, buddy, that's great. Something that you had lost was now found. And that reminds me of the Easter story. So who can tell me the Easter story? Who can tell me the Easter story? You hold on to those for a sec. Come and stand over there for me. Come and stand over there for me. Who can tell me the Easter story? Who can tell me something about the Easter story? First of all, who does the Easter story involve? Who does the Easter story involve? Jesus. Jesus. And what had happened to Jesus? He had been put on a cross. He had been put on a cross and he had died. But is that the end of the story? What had then happened? What then happened? He risen from the dead. He rose from the dead. Isn't that brilliant? Now, we heard at the start of our service today from Luke 24 that two women had come to uh, basically put, put flowers and, um, and uh, just sort of remember Jesus. But when they got there, they found something different. Does anybody remember what they found? They found an empty box without okay. Jesus. They found an empty box without Jesus. They found that Jesus wasn't there. Do you know what they had? They had a mystery. They had a problem. I don't know if you've ever had a problem, kids. Have you ever had a problem? Maybe at school or maybe at home. Adults, you've definitely had a problem from time to time. We know, we know they happen. And, you know, I was struck by this. The fact that there's the, the, just, just a little verse in the middle that says they were wondering what had happened to him. And I bet can't guarantee, but I, I bet they, they, they probably never expected the answer to be what it was. Because they were then encountered. Does anybody know what, who they then met? They then met two people. Who did they meet? Angels. They met angels. They went expecting to do something ordinary and met the extraordinary. And I want to encourage you kids, Jesus had risen from the grave. And so often we can face our problems and expect an ordinary answer. But I want to encourage you that Jesus has the victory today. Jesus has conquered death. Isn't that amazing, kids? Kids, I want you to give your biggest cheer for Jesus winning the victory over death. Are you ready? One, two, three. Yeah! Do you reckon the adults could do better than that? 
Are you ready, adults? Let's give a cheer for Jesus' victory over death. Are you ready? One, two, three. Yeah. Now, in kids, you're not going to let that sort of, um, lie, are you? You're not going to let the adults win, are you? Are you ready? One, two, three. Yeah. And you know what? God is still in the business of doing extraordinary things today. So I want to encourage you, as many of you go back to uh, school this week, as many of you go back to work after the Easter holidays, to expect God to be working. To expect God to be giving you opportunities to show Jesus to your friends, to show Jesus to your family, to show Jesus to those people you work with. Because this isn't just some ordinary thing we are here to do. We are here to celebrate the most phenomenal, history-shaking moment ever on planet Earth. We get to celebrate it every Sunday, but especially today. So kids, I want you to expect more. Everyone say that again. One, two, three. Expect more. Kids, you want to make your way back to your seats. Thank you, Destiny Puppets. 
Well, this morning, I just want to share a short message with you. And actually, I want to read some of Matthew chapter 28, which is the, the story of the resurrection. And in Matthew 28, it said, After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And so if you'd like, if you're taking notes and you want to have a point, what are you looking at? What are you observing when you think about Easter? What is your expectation when you go to see what Easter is all about? If maybe you're wondering about Jesus, when you go to see Jesus, what is your expectation? What are you hoping to observe? The women went to the tomb to look. When you think about Jesus, what do you see? What are you looking for? Are you looking for something particular for you? Are you looking to just wonder what it is? What's your expectation? In verse 2 it says, Then there was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Do you know, when you meet Jesus and you go to look for Jesus, don't be surprised if something so dramatic happens that shakes your world. Do you know, God doesn't come into your world and just make it a, a smidgen better. That's not the way that God does things. When God gets involved in our life, he fundamentally shakes up every single part of life, actually in a, a pretty violent, dramatic way. Because God doesn't want to just make little changes in your life. He wants to dramatically change every part of your life. And in this case, the earthquake happened. This change came. And in that moment, the stone was rolled away. And the tomb was found empty. And something miraculous came from heaven down to earth that changed the earth. Just in one moment. Do you know, when you go and search for God, don't be surprised if something violent changes in your life that means that it's shaken up to be put in line with what God wants for your life. In verse 3, it talks about the angel, and his appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. Do you know, the appearance of things from God are incredible. They're bright, they're shiny, they're so mesmerizing that we can't quite explain them. Try and explain what lightning is. Well, it's something bright and flashy in the sky, but it's there and it's gone and it's it's really hard to explain what lightning looks like. You try and draw a picture of it, but it doesn't capture the enormity of it. It doesn't capture the sound. It doesn't capture the power. It doesn't capture the fact that your skin fizzles when there's a good lightning storm. Have you ever experienced that? There's a lightning storm, and every part of your body becomes aware and electrified because of it. Do you know, when you meet something from God, something like that happens for each and every one of us as well. Because God is a tangible God in a real way. In verse, four, in, in verse 4, it says, The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. It's a really interesting little verse in the middle of that. Uh, but don't be surprised that people that see God do something dramatic in your life don't understand what it is. And actually, to, to you, they'll become like dead men. They won't get it. They won't understand it. They'll just be, hmm, dead. And something on the inside of them can't see what it is. They don't understand it. They've not felt it. They've not connected with it. And actually, they look the opposite of people who are alive. Jesus was just risen from the tomb, alive. And the guards who didn't believe it all were like dead men. You can see the contrast here. Don't be surprised if people in your life, when you connect with God, don't understand it and look like dead men in comparison to you. Some people say that they're the unregenerate or they're the people that haven't got God and they are dead spiritually because they've not been awakened to all that God's got for us. Make sure that we're people who are alive in God. Make sure that we're people who are looking at that angel, that provision from heaven, not people that were scared shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women in verse 5, do not be afraid. Do you know what? When you meet God, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of anything because God is our Father. He loves us. He wants to say, don't worry about coming into his presence because he's just got giant arms that are there, open to you, wanting to welcome you and saying, I know you. You're my child. 
and I love you. Verse 6, it says, the angel said, he is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Do you know there's something very important in the fact that Jesus rose? In Jesus rising, he proved, he proved beyond doubt that there was nothing more powerful than him. That means that in our situations, nothing is more powerful than what God can do. Nothing can be more victorious, and the ultimate victory has already been won by Jesus beating death. It says that a grave couldn't contain him. It says that death couldn't hold him down. It says that nothing could actually damage him and hurt him at all. It said that he can never, ever be destroyed. Not by an ideology, not by science, not by powers, not by anything that's going on in the world. And it actually says that God is more powerful than everything else in our lives. And that all comes because of one thing. He is risen. So today my challenge to you is, what are you looking at? What's shaking in your life? What does it look like? Make sure you're alive. Don't be afraid. And then understand the power of risen in your life. If we can capture that in our own lives, we can get to know the incredible Savior that is alive, that is filled with that power that wants to be involved in your life every single day. And every single day we can say, he is risen. That means he's on the throne. That means it doesn't matter about my situations. God is still on the throne of heaven, alive, risen, conquering in an incredibly powerful way. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for Easter. Thank you that you rose again for us in an all-powerful, victorious way. Thank you that nothing is impossible for you. And thank you that you proved that by rising again this Easter Sunday morning. We pray that you're going to help each and every one of us to get to know you in such a personal way and to have a revelation again about the victorious power of you being raised from death and conquering every situation. And help us to live a life knowing that you're with us with all of that power in our lives. Amen. I'm going to invite the band back now, and Elder Allen is going to come and help lead us in some communion too.
What a great day, isn't it, today? And on that night when he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. It's just a symbol. It's an emblem, that's all. Jesus took bread. He just took some bread. He said to his disciples, this is my body which is given for you. It's been broken for you. He said to them, do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And over all these centuries, 2,000 years, we've been celebrating Jesus giving his life for us. And likewise, after supper with his disciples, he took a cup and he gave thanks. And he said to his disciples, drink this, this is the blood of the new covenant in, in my blood. Those centuries of animal sacrifices accumulating now in Jesus saying, this is it. This is the sacrifice once and for all. This is my blood for the new covenant. The old covenant's gone. This is the new covenant. You should be celebrating, rejoicing. This is the new covenant shed in Jesus' blood. So as we take this this morning, thank God for your salvation. Because without the shedding of blood, there was no remission for your sins. But Jesus paid the full price. His precious blood shed for you and for me. And in a moment, you're going to do this. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm conscious of the presence of the Lord. Thank you for your message this morning, Wes. Exactly right, exactly right. And I just, I just love to contemplate sometimes on what it costs Jesus to do this for me and for you. Do you ever think that? Do you ever think about it? I do. Constantly. Constantly. And it says in the script, you know, came to me this morning that he says if Christ has not been risen from the dead your faith is vain and you're still in your sins but Christ is risen from the dead and your sins are forgiven this morning you were a child of God he who the sun sets free is free indeed and this morning, all your sins, which were many or few, are all forgiven. And when Jesus looks at you, he sees you as the righteousness of God in Christ. You're standing before him this morning as a son and daughter of the living God, nothing between, boldly coming into his presence as the risen son of God. And not only that, he loves you with an, I can't even begin to, even put into words how much God really loves you.
worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. 